Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. So in this video, I am going to explain you about physiology of eye. And this video includes vision cycle, structure of eye, rods and cones and valves vision cycle and it also includes hyperpolarization. So firstly let us discuss about the structure of the eye and then later let us later enter into this rods and cones valves vision cycle. Okay, so firstly let us discuss about the structure of the eye and I am going to explain you about the external structure as well as the internal structure. So firstly let us discuss about the external structure of the eye then let us enter into the internal structure. So if you see the diagram properly here this will be the diagram of the external structure of the eye and this external structure of the eye parts includes lacrimal gland here these are called as eyebrows and here these are the eyelids these both which are brown are known as eyelids and this black color one which is at the center region are called as pupil is called as pupil and if you see your eyes in the mirror and then at the corner of the eye you can see a red color uh, you know ball like structure right and that is called as caruncle and it is commonly called as tear duct so next this is called as lacrimal gland and this lacrimal gland is just attached to this tear duct itself and this white color region which can, which we can see is called as clera and this green color one which i have drawn is known as iris normally this green color this is in the green color which i have drawn but normally it will be in a black color so for your better understanding purpose i have drawn within a green green color so this green in color which i have drawn is known as iris and the black color one dot like structure which will be present in the eyeball is called as pupil so this will be the normal labeling of this external structure of the eye and I have said you that there will be two eyelids. So what is the major function of this eyelid? It mainly helps in the preventing of the entry of the dust particles into your eye. It may the main function of this eyelids is only for the protection. Okay and next nictating membrane will be present and this nictating membrane can be uh, seen at the back side of our eye which will be lined and this nictating membrane consists of superior as well as the inferior canaliculus okay and there is the presence of the lacrimal glands so these are the lacrimal glands which are blue color one which i have drawn so before entering into the lacrimal glands if you see here this red color structure which i have said you is called as tear duct so what is the major function of this tear duct it mainly helps in the production of the tears during the sad times okay the the you know the production of this tear duct will be involved in the transmission of the synapse only so here this uh, you know production of the tears occur from this tear duct so this production of the tears i mean the formation of the tears occur in the lacrimal glands that secretion of that water like thing will be secreted by this lacrimal glands and here also the lacrimal gland will be present so this both of these lacrimal glands helps in the preparation of the tears which is in the water form and the production of the tears occurs from this tear duct and this tear duct is also called as caruncle okay so that is a major function of this lacrimal gland and these lacrimal glands are also called as tear glands so this will be the external structure of the eye so now let us learn about the internal structure of the eye so if you see the stru structure of the eye internally this will, it looks like this so this outer layer of the structure of the eye is lined with cornea and back side and the beside part of this cornea is aqueous humor which will be present and inside the inside that aqueous humor there is the presence of the lens so these are the these are called as lens actually okay and there is a presence of the optic nerve so what is the major function of this optic nerve it mainly helps in the transmission of the signals it, it sends signals to the eye and it also sends signals from the eye to the brain so enough next retina so this is called as retina so here the retina plays a major role in the vision of the eye and it is called as a light sensitive part and this vision can be depend upon the two type of cones sorry two type of cells and those cells are called as photoreceptor cells and those cells are called as rods and cones rod cells and cone cells these rods and cones are called as photoreceptor cells okay so now let us discuss deeply about the rods and cones along with the structures so now let us discuss about the structures of rods and cones so this will be the structure of the rod and this will be the structure of the cone okay so there will be many rods and many cones so what is the major purpose of these rods and cones? It mainly helps in the detection of the light. So when the light is allowed to pass into your eyes and then this, uh, you know, rods and cones will detect that, uh, you know, that image. I mean that light which has been passed from that eyes. So how these rods and cones will work basically? Let us see now. So this is, uh, this is the structure of the rods and this will be the structure of the cone. And the common similar thing is the segments. This, each of these rods and cones will be divided into three segments like outer segment, 
and up to here inner segment and this is called as a ganglion layer and in the same way here also in the cones also here from here to here it is considered as the outer segment and from here to here it is considered as the inner segment even the nucleus will also be considered as the inner segment only and here this is considered as a ganglion layer it is named as a ganglion layer because it mainly helps in the transmission of the synapse so this will be the normal structure of the rods as well as the cones so firstly let us discuss about the differences between the rods and cones then let us discuss about the labelings of these rods and cone structures so coming to the differences between the rods and cones so what is a major pigment which is present in these rods rhodopsin and it is also called as dim pigment why it is called as dim pigment let us learn it later and the cones the pigments which are present in the cones are three color pigments so what are those pigments red pigment green color and blue color pigments and these are called as sensitive detectors okay and even there is also other other names of this red color green color and blue color pigments let us see here and the red color pigment is called as phycoerythropsin and the green color pigment is called as iodopsin and the blue color pigment is called as cyanopsin so these all of these three are differently named based upon this color okay so all of these are called as sensitive detectors also so why it is called as dim pigment why the rhodopsin is called as dim pigment because this rhodopsin will get activated only in the dim light for example when the dim light is allowed to pass in your eyes and the dim light will be detected by these rods because there is a presence of the rhodopsin pigment which is present in your rods and in the same way in in these cones here i have said you the dim light vision i mean uh, only the dim light can be detected by this rhodopsin but if you see in the case of cones bright light will be detected by these cones so the phenomena in which the dim light will get detected by the rods is called as scotopic vision and the phenomena in which the bright light will get detected by these cones are called as phototopic vision photopic vision i mean so this will be the major differences between the rods and cones so now coming to the labelings of this structure of rods and cones so here i have said you that there will be a pigments of rods and cones right that rhodopsin and as well as the red green and blue color pigments right so those pigments will be present in the outer segment like this this folding lined uh, which i have drawn like this in the curved structures which i have drawn like this uh, are called as you know pigments which consists of the pigments these are lined with the pigments actually so here in this this is a called as rod structure and this is called as cone structure right so in the rods in the outer segment there is a presence of this foldings region right and within this foldings there is a presence of the rhodopsin pigment and here also in this folding regions there consists of three color pigments that's nothing but the phycoerythropsin which is red in color and the iodopsin which is green in color and the cyanopsin which is blue in color all of these three pigments will be present in this region of this folding like structures which is present at the outer segment so this is this is a complete about the outer segment and this is both is called as connecting cilium okay and here coming to the inner segment and what is the what is present in this inner segment actually this inner segment consists of organelles like mitochondria endoplasmic reticulum and nucleus and this ganglion layer and here also ganglion layer plays a major role in the vision cycle and also in the hyperpolarization so what is mean by hyperpolarization i am going to explain you it after the vision cycle so now let us learn what is meant by vision cycle actually what is vision cycle and who discovered it so okay. the vision cycle was firstly discovered by a scientist called as waltz hence it is named as waltz vision cycle and this waltz vision cycle can be explained in rods as well as the cones so there will be no much difference between the vision cycle in rods as well as the cones but there will be only slight difference so what is the difference let us see now so in, before entering into the difference firstly let us learn about the vision cycle in the rods so we know that the rods consists of rhodopsin pigment so when the light is allowed to fall upon the light of when the when the light is allowed to fall upon the eyes then the rhodopsin pigment will grasp that light so when that rhodopsin will get activated so when that rhodopsin will get activated then what happens then the rhodopsin will get converted into the bathorhodopsin right and now this bathorhodopsin will get converted into the lumirhodopsin and this lumirhodopsin will get converted into the metarhodopsin 1 and from the metarhodopsin will get converted into the metarhodopsin 2 So now this metarhodopsin 2 has a two pathways. I mean, it it will convert uh, this metarhodopsin. I mean, it forms the products of scotopsin as well as the all trans retinal. So these are the two products which has been formed from the metarhodopsin 2, right? And now this scotopsin will get converted back into the rhodopsin by using this Levenzis retinal. Okay, the scotopsin has been formed formed from the metarhodopsin 2, and this scotopsin will combine with Levenzis retinal and forms rhodopsin. So, how this Levenzis retinal will be synthesized from the all trans retinal, which is another byproduct which has been formed from the metarhodopsin 2. So now, this all trans retinal 
can convert this uh, alternate retinol into the levens retinol by using an enzyme called as retinal isomerase and normally this process occurs in the liver actually so this alternate retinol will also convert will also get converted into the all trans retinol so all and all is a major difference between these two all trans retinol will get converted into all trans retinol by using an enzyme called as alcohol dehydrogenase and here NADH plus H plus is energy which will be utilized and forms NAD plus and here this NAD plus will also give and now this NAD plus will be used and here this, this is a product of the NAD plus right and this product of the NAD plus will be used again in this in this process I mean normally this all trans retinol which has been formed here as a product from the all trans retinol will again get converted into Levensis retinol Levensis retinol by using an enzyme known as retinol isomerase and now what happens here the NAD plus energy has been liberated right and now this liberated NAD plus energy will be used by this Levensis retinol in such a way that it will get converted into Levensis retinol so these are two pathways in such a way that this all trans retinol can directly convert into Levensis retinol or else this all trans retinol will enter into the liver and it will convert into all trans retinol and then it will convert into Levensis retinol and then this Levensis retinol will get converted into Levensis retinol this happens in some cases and this will also happen in some cases so these are the two pathways which you have to remember and now what happens this Levensis retinol has been formed as a product right and this Levensis retinol will get combined with the scotopsin this is the first product which has been formed from the metarotopsin so metarotopsin forms the two products which I have said you that is scotopsin as well as the all trans retinol so this scotopsin will get combined with the Levensis retinol which has been formed and this both will get combined with each other and forms again the rhodopsin and now this rhodopsin will again absorb the light and this product and again converts into bethrhodopsin and again the total cycle of these rods will get completed I mean will get repeated so this is about the Ward's vision cycle in the rods so even the cones even if you see in the case of the cones also the same cycle will get repeated but here the pigment which are going to use are phycoerythropsin, iodopsin or else the cyanopsin because these are the pigments which are present in the cones which I have said you at the you know at the rods and cones classification I have said you this red color green color and blue color detectors the red color detector is called as phycoerythropsin the green color is called as iodopsin and the blue color is called as cyanopsin so here in the place of this rhodopsin you have to take phycoerythropsin or as the iodopsin or as the cyanopsin and after taking that the light will be allowed into pa pa will be passed into your eyes and the retina will detect it and if the cones with the appropriate pigments will detect that light which has been passed from the environment right and when it's when this phycoerythropsin or as the iodopsin or as the cyanopsin will detect the light then the whole process which will be formed will be same so up to here the whole process will be same in the scones also but the products which will be formed here are all trans retinol only but here the scotopsin will not be formed instead of scotopsin opsin will be formed okay hope you understood what i am saying so up to metarhodopsin 2 the whole process will be similar now the byproducts which will be formed in the metarhodopsin 2 in the cones are all trans retinol as well as the opsin but not scotopsin instead of scotopsin the opsin will be formed in the cones and remaining the total process will be the same again this scotopsin will get combined with the Levensis retinol and finally it forms again the phycoerythropsin or as the iodopsin or as the cyanopsin which you will take the pigment in the cones so in this way the world's vision cycle occurs in the cones there will be no much similarity uh, there will be much similarity between rods and cones and there will be no much differentiation okay so this is about the world's vision cycle in the rods and cones and here there is one of the important thing which you have to notice what happens when the sudden exposure to the light occurs to the eyes then it causes hyperpolarization that's nothing but when more amount of light suddenly appears on your eyes then immediately you will close your eyes right so what is the mechanism which has been present uh, behind that what is the mechanism the mechanism is called as hyperpolarization so actually what is hyperpolarization this occurs due to the decrease in the concentration of CGMP cyclic guanosine monophosphate so let us learn briefly about this hyperpolarization along with the structure so now let us learn about the hyperpolarization so what I have said you about the hyperpolarization when the more amount of light will suddenly fall on your eyes then immediately will close your eyes right so that closing of your eyes occurs uh, based upon a mechanism called as hyperpolarization so now let us learn deeply about the hyperpolarization and the, what is the mechanism which is involved in it so as we know that the light is allowed to fall upon the eyes right so as the light is involving for example if you see in the case of the rods I am explaining you in the case of the rods we know that the pigment which is present in the rods is called as rhodopsin right so this rhodopsin pigment will capture the light 
and as this rhodopsin pigment captures the light then it converts into meta rhodopsin 1 and it converts into the all trans retinol so up to here the process will be similar because the light is allowed to fall upon the rhodopsin and from here the actual phenomena starts where the hyperpolarization occurs so now what happens let us see so here all trans retinol has been formed right and now this all trans retinol will convert the inactive transducin into active transducin so now this active transducin will convert the inactive phosphodiesterase into active phosphodiesterase and this phosphodiesterase plays a major role in such a way that it converts the cyclic GMP to the normal GMP. So when the more amount of phosphodiesterase active is involved then the, then the continuous conversion of the cyclic GMP to normal GMP occurs. When the continuous, when the continuous the conversion of cyclic GMP to normal GMP occurs then what happens immediately the concentration of the cyclic GMP gradually decreases because the, the because there is continuous conversion to the normal GMP right so when there is a continuous conversion then what happens immediately the concentration of the cyclic GMP gradually decreases the brackets which I have drawn indicates the concentration and the concentration of the cyclic GMP gradually decreases and that's what I have explained you in the theory also for, for if you see here here what I have said you here actually, what is meant by hyperpolarization? This occurs due to the decrease in the concentration of the cyclic GMP. So that's what happened here. How does how does the how does the concentration of the cyclic GMP occurs by the conversion of the cyclic GMP into the normal GMP by using this active phosphodiesterase. In this way, the concentration of the cyclic GMP gradually decreases. So when this gradually decrease in the cyclic GMP then immediately the glutamate the glutamate concentration will also get di gradually decreased when the glutamate concentration will get decreased then our eyes will get gradually closed so how that phenomena occurs let us see now so this will be the structure of the rods right and the rods consists of gated channels and ungated channels like if you see here this is a sodium gated channel and this is a potassium ungated channel and this is called as sp pump sp pump is nothing but the sodium potassium pump and this is called as calcium gated channels okay so normally i'm going to say you the normal function of this gated channels okay so this sodium gated channels it mainly helps in involving the sodium ions to enter into the cell so that's the major function of this sodium gated channels and now what is the main function of this sp pump so here the sodium channels and sodium ions has been entered into the cell right so the sodium ions will concentration of the sodium ions will get gradually increased so that the sodium ions should get protruded out from the cell and this takes place by the functioning of the sp pump and normally this sp pump performs two functions the first function is just now i have said to you that sodium ions will uh, send back uh, you know it will get protruded out and this function takes place by the sp pump and that will be the first function and now coming to the second function and this potassium ions will enter into the cell by this sp pump only so these are the two major functions which which are performed by this sp pump so here finally the potassium ions has been entered into the cell so now what happens immediately the concentration of the potassium ions gradually increases then that potassium ions should get liberated out i mean it should get protruded out right and that function will be taken place by this ungated channels potassium ungated channels so what is the main function of this potassium ungated channels to remove the potassium so to remove the potassium ions which are present inside the cell inside the rod cell okay so these are the functions of these three gated channels and here if you see here there is the presence of calcium gated channels which mainly helps in uh, in involving the entry of the calcium channels calcium ions into the cell so this involves uh, mainly helps this calcium ions mainly helps in the production of the glutamate so here this will be the normal function of these rods and the normal gated channels and ungated channels functioning of the rods so now what happens here actually when the concentration of the cyclic gmp gradually decreases when the when the when there will be decrease in the cyclic gmp concentration then what happens is that immediately this sodium gated channels will be closed so when the sodium gated channels will be closed then what happens so there will be closing of the sodium gated channels then what happens then the sodium ions will not enter into the cells right so now what happens when the sodium will no, sodium ions will not enter into the cells then continuous uh, you know continuous involving of entry of k plus ions occur because the sodium ions will gradually will removed out by this sp pump itself and the, there is also other function of the sp pump which i have said you which mainly helps in involving the entry of this k plus pump k plus ions so when this k plus ions will gradually increases the k plus ion concentration gradually increases then what happens then the concentration of this k plus ions will be removed by this ungated channels potassium ungated channels right so now what happens immediately when the more concentration of the potassium ungated channels occur then immediately 
the calcium gated channels will be closed when the calcium gated channels will be closed then there will be no entry of calcium ions into the cell right so when there is no involvement of calcium ions then the glutamate production will also get decreased and there will be no production of the glutamate also so when there will be no production of the glutamate then what happens then it causes hyperpolarization students so that is a process which is involved in the hyperpolarization so due to this hyperpolarization what happens then immediately our eyes will immediately get closed when the more concentration of the light is allowed to pass into your eyes so this is about the hyperpolarization so if you like this video just do like and subscribe and if you have any doubts regarding this video please comment in the comment box and the written notes of this topic will be given in the whatsapp group so the invite link of that whatsapp group will be given in the description box you can come and you can join us in whatsapp group and ping me a message then the notes will be given for you immediately so thank you students